hallelujah let's go ahead and pray in the spirit for just one minute go ahead and pray in the spirit Go ahead and pray. Sheparuska te prande gede balakuska de balakus yada. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Sing, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. One more time. We look to Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for the sick before we sit. I just began to sense a very strong healing anointing right from home. This is a supernatural ministry. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I just sensed that the Lord was touching people. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil father in the name of jesus just lay your hands if there is any part of your body you're trusting the lord for healing will be seated shortly but while minister Owe just stirred the atmosphere Again, it was a confirmation that the Lord wanted to touch, to heal, to bless. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you move in the midst of your people. Confirming the word, bringing healing, bringing miracles right now in the name of jesus every spirit that is back of any disease and any infirmity i come against you in the name of jesus i come against you in the name of jesus every stranger roaming around your body in the name that is above all names and by the power of the holy spirit I minister the life of Jesus to you right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Inside, outside, online. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. That back problem. I'm seeing a very severe back problem like pain around the back area in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be a miracle right now (laughs) 
Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to four families who will be seated shortly. But while I just closed my eyes, I saw a manifestation of the spirit of death. And I wanted to bring them out. There are families here that the spirit of death, we are ministers of life and it will not be under our watch that will allow the spirit of death to sweep over families in the name of Jesus Christ inside and outside I declare as revealed to me by the spirit anyone here or any family here connected or appointed to death in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing at least four people I just saw like fire in the name of Jesus Christ for you and for all who are connected to you no matter what part of the world no matter where they are I decree and declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now Bring the lady that the power of God comes on right now. Death, you are a spirit. We stand by the grace of God. My goodness. See, I know that we are here to hear the word. But there is no point ministering when we know that there are people who have issues. If the Lord reveals this, it's because he wants to bring a miracle. Bring the lady. There's a lady under the anointing I'm saying. And then... This at least four people. Paras kuda shelatos kebriata. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh death, where is your sting? Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death. I'm seeing two people at the overflow outside. Not the basement, the overflow outside. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, death, where is your sting? Please bring them out. I'm ministering to them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring them very quickly so that we'll save time. Very quickly, please help the ushers. So that will save time. Arush Kalibra Dagaskuti Pinata. Who is Stephen? I'm hearing a name Stephen. We'll be seated shortly, but I'm hearing a name Stephen. The Lord is opening. A new chapter a new chapter there is a lady outside the overflow outside who will begin to run by the spirit please whether you are an usher or not just hold her and lead her out so she does not injure herself outside hmm. who is Stephen Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. I take authority over every spirit binding families and will not let them go. I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the reign of witchcraft and wickedness let it come to an end now. 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 Who brought this gentleman? Who came with this man? Because I'm seeing a spirit of stroke. This is what I'm seeing. 
but the Lord is bringing him healing right now. I command that devil, let him go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't come out at random. Let's, we have to walk. Stephen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on one of you. And the Lord, I'm seeing a door opening in the realm of the spirit for your family. Right now. A door opening and the Lord is saying that delay is coming to an end. Coming to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ sir look at me shout jesus as loud as you can in the name of jesus christ just this gentleman i decree and declare i'm seeing a chain around your waist i lose you now in the name of jesus christ i lose you now every family here that is under the siege of darkness please listen please listen don't waste your time here every family that is under any siege doesn't matter how long it has been right now fire from heaven at the count of three in the name of jesus i declare that siege broken one two three be broken now be broken now be broken now be broken now hallelujah you're not wasting your time this is the house of god listen i'm seeing what looks like an arrow just pegging people and the lord is saying there are people here you are the ones ordained to be the lifters of your family but it looks like there are forces sitting on your destiny some of you are supposed to be preachers some of you are supposed to be anointed men and women but right now my god i'm seeing fire anyone here destined to be used by god to lift up the heads of your family but you are being kept down at the count of three i declare the power of god is coming on you bring them out one two three may that fire come upon you now may that fire come upon you now i release you i release you no matter how long you have been bound i release you in the name of jesus christ i release you male and female young and old this is zion in the name of jesus christ be delivered you'll be seated shortly but i am seeing many people in business but are under all kinds of yokes and i'm seeing oil being poured on the ground this is an anointing bringing breakthrough if you don't believe it don't worry you can but in the name of jesus anyone here under the sound of my voice you are in business and if there is any siege in the name Papakos Katapakata, Rekete Prokete Bakata, in the name of Jesus, that siege is broken now. That siege is broken now. Help them, please. That siege is broken now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. For all of you who are here as Stevens in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare this door that I saw open in the spirit, oh, may it be so for you. 
may it be so for you the sickness on this man this man wearing yellow the holy spirit keeps drawing me to him this man holds the salvation of his family but i'm seeing that there is sickness the devil wants to put stroke in the name of jesus let him go now and go forever in the name of jesus christ the name of jesus hear me no matter how long it has been you should come to church and return back knowing you encountered jesus i'm seeing the power of god come on a woman an elderly woman this is what i'm seeing in my vision i don't know what this is for but i'm seeing the power of god this is not a young woman at least she should not be less than 50 55 upwards i just saw the power of god come on that woman and the lord is saying he's visiting her your children have been praying for you i don't know where that person is but in the name of jesus christ right now my decree whether inside all the overflows outside let there be a miracle for you right now let there be a miracle for you right now i'm hearing a name justina who is justina justina who is justina what is your name where are you coming from huh i'm from cross justina father you have gathered us tonight the person i'm seeing is you are wearing like yellow and red something her tie this is what i'm seeing who is that please if listen if god gives a word if it's not for you just be patient doesn't mean that god is what is what's her name verify that what i'm saying madam what is your name huh no your name i will pray for you but this your name is your name is not justine now madam who is josephine what's your name your name is not Justina your name is Josephine. Josephine Josephine that's what I'm saying I will pray for you but I said Justina what's your name Justina. father let me pray for her since she's out where are you from Kaduna. in the name of Jesus this spirit that has tied people in your family I declare right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead be delivered now be delivered now Madam, where are you coming from? Please help us. Is this mic working? Please. From Abuja here. Abuja. You're coming from Abuja here? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, please stand up. The plague of sickness over your life and your family. Is that true? I decree and declare right now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring you life by the Spirit let that plague of sickness and infirmity come to an end now in the name of jesus christ you will return with marvelous testimonies testimonies of the supernatural hand of god in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ and for everyone who is out here in the name of jesus be delivered now be healed now return with your testimony in the name of jesus everyone please let's pray father give me an encounter tonight in jesus name please lift your voice as we pray father give me an encounter by your spirit tonight is someone praying give me an encounter tonight by your spirit Someone is praying. Someone is 
From the pages of my heart Let my worship begin that never ends It's from the pages of my heart Let my worship begin that never ends To the God of all flesh you're my God and your name is Yahweh Your name is Yahweh Yahweh You're my King and your name is Yahweh Your name is Yahweh Yahweh Hallelujah God bless you. Welcome to church. This is Koinonia. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Appreciate everyone. Thank you so much. Can we give Minister Owe a great, great, great God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have to get to the word very quickly. Such a strong anointing. I sense that even as a ministry that God is shifting us to new and deeper levels of the anointing. One of the keys that control increase in the anointing is faithfulness. The Bible says he who, that is faithful in little is faithful in much or with much. So when God commits a measure of grace, it is expected that you commit yourself to ministering at that level with faithfulness, with diligence. And God who sees you in secret indeed will honor you. Praise the name of the Lord. We're still teaching along the lines of the instruction that we receive, teaching on the graces that are in this house. Tonight, I'll be teaching on commanding the supernatural. Commanding the supernatural. Please write it down and psalm 72 and verse 18 this is one of the graces that god has so lavishly granted us access to as a ministry among the many graces that are at work in this house is the grace for signs for wonders and for miracles and the church of the lord jesus christ is a supernatural church and it's important that we understand the dynamics of operating supernatural Christianity. Otherwise, Jesus will not be glorified in our lives and through our lives. And so I want you to pay attention. I'll be as brief as possible, hoping that we'll have some time to pray tonight. Psalm 72 and verse 18, it says, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. This is a very powerful statement. That means that anything that is done that does not cause you to marvel and wonder was not done by God. Because if it is God, there must be an element of wonder. There must be, he will do it in a way and a manner that must cause both the recipient of that blessing and the audience to marvel at the intelligence, the wisdom, the power and the grace of God. Psalms 118 and verse 23. We'll look at four scriptures. Psalm 118 and verse 23. It says, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Not just marvelous in our heart. Once it is the Lord's doing, it must bring with it an element of marvel, an element of of the supernatural beyond the realm of science beyond the realm of reason is his signature that everything he does must be marvelous in our eyes psalm 77 from verse 14 and 15 very powerful scripture it says thou art the god that doeth wonders Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. 15. It says, Thou hast with thy arm redeemed thy people. 
the sons of jo Jacob and Joseph. You are the God that doeth wonders. Exodus 15, the last verse and verse 11. Exodus 15 and verse 11. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Please keep the scripture there. Nothing in this world Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. It says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? So the Bible recognizes that there are gods. He does not call them men. He calls them gods. And then he says, Who is like thee? glorious in holiness fearful in praises it does not stop there he says doing wonders just keep verse 11 doing wonders please write this down the days of the supernatural the days of miracles signs and wonders are not over there has been a very subtle narrative that has crept into the church for a very long time and still continues to gain strength. The proposition that the days of the supernatural, the days of signs and of wonders are over. To say the days of the supernatural are over is the same thing as saying God has died. To say the days of the supernatural are over is the same thing as saying the church is dead. Our God is a supernatural God. Our God is a miracle working God. From Genesis to Revelations, we see the consistency of God as far as his supernatural operations is concerned. And the Bible tells us in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, the A part, it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. I am the Lord, my character is consistent. I can bend my methods, my approach can change, but intrinsically, I do not change. I am the Lord and I change not. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Paul himself was teaching us and the Bible says Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 he says did I get that right Jesus Christ the same today yesterday today and forever it talks about the consistency that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday he's the same today and he's the same forever Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he's the same. There are people who are not the same way you knew them, both for good and for evil. But the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday. Write this down. Miracles and the supernatural are the foundation of the Christian faith. You have to understand and appreciate it that the miraculous and the supernatural are the foundations, the pillars, the foundation of the Christian faith. The era of miracles are not over. Indeed, they are the foundation of the Christian faith. The Bible is a compendium of the miraculous, the wondrous acts of God from Genesis to Revelations. Now, I know that one of the reasons why, let me just address this up front. One of the reasons why people fear the supernatural, one of the reasons why people fear the miraculous is because of a very sincere desire in their hearts to not dapple into extra biblical practices. Please look up. It is, it is a fear 
that many people have because in our world today we have all kinds of religion and even sadly among the christian fold there are all kinds of practices that based on the authority of scripture qualify to be seen as extra biblical practices and practices that may not be consistent with the way god operates so in a bid to manage that fear many people have shut the door at anything that is supernatural in context in a bid to walk within the zone of safety and the zone of balance let me therefore say this god does not walk magic god is not a magician magic is a practice that is not derived from the operation of the word of god and the ministry of the holy spirit it does not matter what advantage it seeks to provide are we together now magic based on the authority of scripture is not how god works magic is largely demonic and is largely a practice that is vocally rooted in satanism god is a miracle worker not a magician the difference between a miracle worker and a magician is that relationship is not involved in magic but when god wants to work the supernatural and miracles it comes as a derivative of a relationship when you meet someone for instance some idol worshiper or some uh, practitioner of satanism he does not care your name he does not desire relationship with you he just wants to know what your problem is and he tells you the conditions to satisfy and whatever reward you desire is given to you but that is not the way god operates when god comes to you he does not just give you power he's interested in a relationship are we together god does not work magic now can i tell you this um in the kingdom we do not judge the the godliness of an operation by the advantage it produces we judge the godliness of an operation by the force that is behind it not just the result it produces because many of us yet yeah, this is africa we're talking about there are many of us who through the means of superstition divination satanism and all kinds of idol practices have derived obvious benefits maybe some of us before we met jesus christ we came from families that were deeply rooted in idolatry and we have partaken of the fruits of those idols those idol practices for instance people have received safety supposedly people have received healings people have received all kinds of things from some of these practices so chances are that we view god and because we live in a, a sociological context that just sees god as anything that provides good anything that provides good we call it god anything that seems to carry a semblance of evil we call it satan there are many good things that are not of god are we together now yes if you do not understand this you have already opened the door for all kinds of deception that means that if moses throws his rod just because it became a serpent and janus and jambes threw his own rod it also became a serpent it does not mean they are colleagues it does not mean they are brethren the Bible clearly shows you that it is not the manifestation of the rod becoming a serpent. It's the influence that is back of it. Because you see, many times when we are under pressure, when we are under pressure, our focus becomes the result, not the influence. So I, I need money. I'm broke and I'm hoping that I can have some means of financial blessings and someone tells you there is someone it's not exactly evil and it's not like he's um he doesn't really do anything obviously bad um highest any the sacrifice ranges from chicken to goat there's nothing human at all and chances are that that serves as a succor especially under that pressure are we together 
and we expose ourselves into all kinds of things our focus is largely on the result not just the spirit that motivates it i told you here and i've taught you that the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can grant you access to the spirit realm any spirit at all is already higher than this three-dimensional realm hallelujah there is a condition for anything any miracle any supernatural manifestation to give glory to god number one it must be a derivative of the word number two it must be under the influence of the spirit of god number three it must bless the saints and glorify jesus these are the conditions for any spiritual process any spiritual process to be accredited as though it, as that it came from god if it does not pass through this test number one if it's not derived from the word number two if the holy spirit does not have a role to play in that process and then number three if it does not bless the saints and reveal jesus something is wrong hallelujah yes this is the basis upon which we can reject many good things because they did not pass that test God does not work magic, but he is a miracle worker. Write this down, please. God has always desired to display the supernatural on earth and among his people. There is no confusion as to the fact that it has always been and still remains the desire of God to bring the manifestation of the supernatural in the midst of his people. From Genesis to Revelation, we see all kinds of supernatural interventions. God stepping in, revealing himself, his power and his glory to his people. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, we see all kinds of manifestations of the miraculous. All kinds, manifestations of power, manifestations of grace and so on and so forth. The Bible has never hidden the fact that God himself desires that manifestation. When you read Genesis, the very creation story is supernatural. Isn't it amazing and, and also instructive that the first revelation, the first, the first um, um, person of the Godhead that was revealed expressly in scripture was the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, the Bible says, Genesis 1, God created the heavens and the earth. It says, now the earth, verse 2, was dark, void, and formless. And the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the deep. And then the supernatural begins. Let there be. And the Bible says there was. And then he began to create, recreate, and do all kinds of supernatural things. In the Old Testament, we see all kinds of manifestations of the supernatural. From Moses, Abraham, manna falling from heaven. All kinds of supernatural judgments that happen to people instantly. You read the Bible and you see supernatural favor that happened to people. These were all manifestations of the power of God beyond the realm of science, beyond the realm of logic, beyond the realm of reason. Then we come to the New Testament and you see all kinds of supernatural manifestation. Time will fail me to begin to discuss them in detail. From the incarnation, Jesus himself, his incarnation was supernatural. The virgin birth very supernatural is still a thing of contention today in fact is one of the basis for contention the contention of the christian faith the reality of what we have come to know theologically as the virgin birth number one the incarnation that god becomes a man the bible calls it a mystery and he said it's a great mystery great is the mystery of godliness god becomes a man then the virgin birth a young lady by believing the angel and cooperating with him is able to host the word and the word is born and named Jesus how about his work on the earth from turning water to wine and all kinds of miracles that happen and then his resurrection from the dead his ascension 
the bible lets us know that when he was coming he came through the womb of a woman but when he was returning he levitated with honor into heaven and a cloud received him and the angels came and said why do you seek jesus he said this same jesus you see will return the same way he has gone you look at the life of the early church you see all kinds of supernatural manifestation acts chapter 2 the bible says now when the day of pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord suddenly this was a miracle that was in the similitude of ezekiel 37 suddenly there was such a manifestation a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were sitting verse 3 it says and they appeared to them it was not said it was created it appeared that's supernatural the tongues that came on their head appeared to appear means that it came from the invisible realm and found expression in the midst of the people tongues like as of fire and sat on each one of them and the bible says verse 4 that they were filled with the holy ghost they began to speak in tongues you know and all of that and then when the people heard them speaking it was a day of pentecost they came and they said who are these crazy people who are drunk early in the morning and peter shot them and said no we are not drunk this is only in the morning he said but this is that this is that which was prophesied by prophet joel so the foundation of christianity is the supernatural to not believe in the supernatural therefore is to not believe in God because God is supernatural please look up isn't it a mystery ladies and gentlemen how that I am on earth and I surrender my life and my heart to God who I may not have seen physically and yet I believe that I'm all right I'm not sick I'm not mad I am okay and then not only that i stand and i speak to him every day can you imagine to the carnal man or the natural man what it means to be praying around and you're saying father i give you all the thanks i thank you because you hear me i bless you for this day in the name of jesus you are my lord and savior and someone says who are you talking to exactly and you say i'm talking to my father who art in heaven And he says who is that and he said be careful the next instruction is hallowed be your name don't disrespect this man i'm talking to you believe you are talking to the lord and then you have the audacity to believe that he talks back to you are we together now now many people doubt the supernatural but you do not have any problem with picking up a metallic object produced by different companies hanging it on your ears and talking with boldness and not ignoring who is looking at you you dial a number and out of 7.6 billion people on earth it does not make a mistake it goes with digital precision to any part in the world you instruct it to then the person is talking to you ladies and gentlemen even planes cannot fly that they cannot cover that distance and yet do you not know that as at the time that call happens it's no longer in this realm oh yes i'm here talking with someone and the person is right there in another nation even with the fastest of planes it will take hours and hours in the air to get there and yet with one dial we're talking and laughing and now you even have the audacity to be looking at the person you are talking and looking at the person you have you, and you have never questioned what you are doing and yet when we say there is a god in heaven who talks who moves who can heal we say are you sure oh come on how are you sure the person you are speaking to is not a demon who is standing on your phone There are people who have not seen themselves physically for years, yet they don't miss themselves because there is a system, a bridge has been created. They communicate every day. Hmm. 
and yet when it has to do with the supernatural the moment there is a supernatural manifestation of the power of god now we have a problem with it how can someone be healed who you probably did not touch who had a condition diagnosed medically and we know that it would take this person months to recover and in a moment you invoke a name the name of jesus and that person is healed that person is blessed how do you release words and tell someone in the name of jesus your week is blessed then the person returns and says, i can't believe what has happened to me the supernatural write this down miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature also defy the usual course of events upon the earth miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature and also defy the usual course of events upon the earth that means that these are manifestations supernatural manifestations that defy logic they defy the natural sequence the way things happen upon the earth the bible lets us know in acts chapter 2 and verse 22 acts chapter 2 and verse 22 it says ye men of israel peter is speaking hear these words jesus of nazareth look up please a man approved of god among you by miracles and wonders and signs which god did by him who did it god he used him god did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves have known so he says jesus a man approved of god that means it's a system of accreditation validating that he really came from me miracles signs wonders can i tell you this the church that jesus died for is not a weak and a beggarly church the church that jesus died for is not a negotiating church that sits down and we continue to be victims of situations and circumstances both human and demonic the church that jesus died for and the church that he's returning for is a supernatural church in matthew chapter 10 when you read from verse 1 then we we'll flip very quickly to verse 7 matthew chapter 10 this was jesus now having mentored the disciples for a season the bible says he called on to him his 12 disciples and he gave them power 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 against unclean spirits that means that power has no effect on clean spirits the moment you are a clean spirit you are welcome the power does not have any effect but the moment you are an unclean spirit that power was not designed to be silent power against unclean spirits not to talk to them not to discuss with them to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease verse 7 and he instructed them as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand next verse it says heal the sick with that power i gave you cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely ye have received freely give do you know what he's saying in other words do not just carry an empty message when you carry an empty message the people have a right to doubt my friend look at me come hold on hold on what was wrong with you it's all right where are you coming from from meduguri that's all right check yourself check yourself that's all right listen that's all right help him he's still under the anointing 
That's all right. Listen, it's okay. Take the mic away from him, please. My friend, look at me. Whether you are a believer or an unbeliever, you are welcome to church. This is the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I'm going to be making the altar call later on, when you hear the altar call, just run quickly and come and join the people here. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we together? John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Please write it down. John chapter 20 from verse 21. John 20. John 20 from verse 21. And Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you. Someone prophesy peace to yourself. One more time, say, peace be unto me. He said, as my father has sent me, question, how did the father send him? As my father has sent me with the supernatural life, supernatural message, supernatural demonstration of that reality, he says, even so, send I you. I am not just sending you. There is a way I sent you. Send you to where? To business, to ministry, to politics. It's not just to come and stand in front of a pulpit. We've dealt with that already. There is a way God sent us. There is a way the world should know he's the one who sent us. And that signature is the supernatural. As the father. Jesus did not have to go around saying, Hey, I've come. Everybody listen to me. There were results that went before him. Manifestations of the power of God. The sick getting healed. Everything happened. And then when people said, who is this? He now said, all of you come. And he began to teach them. As my father has sent me. In John chapter 14 and verse 2. John chapter 14. Verse 12, sorry. John 14. Please go to verse 12. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than this. You know, there have been all kinds of interpretations of this scripture, depending on whether you believe Jesus was serious or not. Many people have watered it down and given a very nice excuse because they know when you make such a bold statement like this, both life and people would demand a defense of this. Greater works, but Jesus said it. Greater works than this shall ye do because I go to my Father. In Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, we we'll read from verse 17. Mark chapter 16 from verse 17. Mark 16 from verse 17. Mark chapter 16 from verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. When you use your name the demons will not go. It says they shall speak with new tongues. Next verse. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Ladies and gentlemen, who said it? Jesus. Jesus himself. He spoke these words and he said this will happen. These are not parables. He really said it and he meant it. Until we restore the supernatural to the church. Not just blind fanatism, but the supernatural as a demonstration of the fact that God is alive and he's still moving in the midst of his people. Can I tell you this? If the supernatural begins to erode out of the church, a day will come, will come to church and only meet empty pews. I guarantee you. Today in our world, there are options. I hope you know that. Oh yes, sir, there are options. Do not downplay the desperation of people and how far people can go when they are desperate. 
We have no right to keep telling people, don't go to idol worshippers. Don't go to anyone. Don't worship any other God. Just come to Jesus. Now they come. And then we tell them, don't worry. He will do something. I, I spoke to him yesterday. He just said he's still walking. Are we together? Yes. The church that Jesus died for is a supernatural church. The supernatural is not for preachers. The supernatural is not for apostles. The supernatural is not for prophets. The supernatural, please look at me. The supernatural is not for those in ministry. The supernatural is for believers. The moment you come into this faith life, you have come into a supernatural life in every way. You must expect the supernatural, not just supernatural events, supernatural living. Not just supernatural events, supernatural living, that this becomes your default state. That means you get up in the morning, and it is possible that someone just comes to your office and shakes your hand and just because he touched your hand without knowing the person leaves and all of a sudden a, a, a disaster that should happen to him when those demons come they meet a system of defense who prayed for this one no a supernatural person touched this one listen to me listen the life that you received that you call zoe eternal life john chapter 3 verse 16 just help those under the anointing it says for god so loved the world believers look at me let's go back to elementary christianity god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever everybody say whosoever he didn't say that the man of god he didn't say the American. He didn't say the European. He didn't say the African. That whosoever believes in him, listen, should not perish. But as a reward, you have. To have means it's been given to you. To have means you are not expecting. Shall have Zoe, the life of God. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me. And I want you to truly believe what I'm saying. The Bible says this is the record. That's a legal terminology. Many of you are, are legal practitioners here. This is the record that God has given us eternal life. I agree that from my background, I may not have anything. Help them. I agree that based on whatever it is, but you have eternal life. You know what eternal life is? Eternal life is not the life you will get when you get to heaven. No, no, no. Eternal life is the supernatural. God, by his spirit, coming to plant within your human spirit. The reality of heaven. The reality of the life, the power, the glory, the culture, the atmosphere of heaven. Implanted in a human spirit. This is not a preacher's sermon. This is what the Bible says. listen listen every one of you here who is in christ is already a partaker of this divine life hold on please listen listen the reality of divinity finding expression in humanity should not be doubted how did jesus enter the womb of mary that's the same way he entered your heart the way jesus entered the womb of mary is the same way don't you tell me how did it happen the answer the angel gave mary is still the answer i'm giving you how shall these things be the power of the highest just that i stand in front of an altar and i make a declaration i hand over my life to jesus and while they are laughing at me a transaction is happening in heaven the same way the holy ghost came and brought Jesus the word into the womb of Mary now he's arrived with his life hear me 
Please sit down. Let me explain something for you. If you do not understand this, forget about a life of victory. This is more than some charismatic talk. No. This is more than just some Pentecostal talk. This is truth from scripture. So, when that life comes, the spirit of the living God comes to tabernacle within a mortal man. A mortal man. Born of a woman. I know that you may come from a Yoruba region, Igbo region, northern region, European region, American region. Help them please. But the moment you make this declaration, the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. You are connected back to your original place with all the benefits that follow that place. Let me tell you, when you know this, you will spend your life helping the lost to find Jesus. It's more than just evangelism. You are helping them. There is no other help that is greater than connecting people to Jesus. Everybody Jesus healed still died. Everybody he raised from the dead still died. But there is something you receive and not perish. If you receive healing, you will perish. If you receive breakthrough, you can still perish. But the life of God. Now, please listen to me. Listen to me. When you receive this supernatural life, the next assignment of the Holy Spirit, watch this. Because you see, the activity of the new birth does not necessarily affect your mind. The activity of the new birth is a spiritual affair. So your mind may be unfruitful many times. You just recited something a preacher said to recite. And you didn't feel anything, didn't fall most times, didn't stand. You just felt the peace of God and they clapped for you and you followed someone and chances are you can downplay the miracle that just happened to you because it was so easy and so cheap in one minute even if a room has been dark for 24 years the moment you put light light will not start and say let me respect the darkness in that instant the light comes so both the room that has been dark for two hours 10 days hundred years they all react the same way to light but when that light comes watch this just because you are a recipient of that life does not make you walk in the liberty of that life let's establish a few things here number one we have been called into a supernatural life based on the authority of scripture the church of the Lord Jesus is a supernatural church the supernatural should be nothing strange for us through us and with us salvation the new birth experience itself is supernatural that's what gives us the basis for manifesting the supernatural however just because you are a recipient of the life of God through the new birth experience does not mean you will walk in it experientially there is the dynamics of the supernatural and that's what I want to expose you to because there are many people as true as all I've said is you may spend the rest of your life living and allowing your life to be a misrepresentation of the power the grace the glory of God and tonight let God be true and every man a liar. If what I've said and all I've said is true, why then do we have preachers that are powerless, businessmen that are powerless, career people that are powerless, believers that are powerless, everything natural, the sequence of your life natural. There is nothing extraordinary in your life. 
when I look at your life and if it is true that you've been grafted into Christ through the activity of new birth I should find that signature of the supernatural trailing you like a shadow following you a week should not pass without you having a supernatural testimony okay apostle I went in the midst of people and I'm listening uh-huh what happened and they just pushed me uh-huh and what else yeah, I returned back home no no that story is not complete Apostle, I got to a place that was full of unbelievers. Uh-huh, I'm listening. What happened? They looked at me, we gisted, we just exchanged pleasantries, and I left. You left? Nothing happened? From you? Through you? To them? Jesus was not revealed? Nothing happened? The sick were not healed? Demons were roaming around, and you were there? And you left? You wave them, they waved you back. How about conferences that are put together and all kinds of attendants are there, both humans and demons. Day one, day two, day three, day four. They even came near the altar with the individuals who dropped the offering and went back and nothing changed. At the end of it, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, such an expensive confession, the love of God, and you call it the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. And at the end of it, those demons still go back. How about missionaries who go to crusade grounds and they come in the name of Jesus, they say, and they preach and they tell the people that Jesus is Lord and when they are done people just sit down and laugh at them I don't mean to be sarcastic but how about ministries that share boundaries with other facilities that may not be Christ-like in their operation and yet for years as that church is there there has not been any impact around listen if you understand this you will know that you have been given the power that transform people where did you keep the reality of that life it's not just by bragging and saying i'm a man of god i'm apostle no great is the mystery of godliness god lives in me it is true brothers and sisters find a way of believing this god lives in me it was not so when i was born because I was not born saved but somewhere around the story of my life I encountered him Jesus who is the son of the living God today he lives in me and I believe there are implications to this my life cannot be natural again everything I'm about my life has to carry that signature not just for the gratification of the flesh but the revelation of Jesus so when someone comes to me and says apostle nothing is working in my life from pillar to post my life is empty what do you think i should do when i see such a person i am happy that you have met me because i am a blessing to you i can't be a cause me and jesus can't fail together me alone can fail i agree he will never fail but since he has decided that this partnership is a salt covenant inseparable Two of us cannot fail together. You carry this mentality. When you get into an office, you enter not as an employee, you enter as an ark. You have been entering as one who was employed, who is being paid X amount of naira or dollars or pounds. That is the reason why you go through the limitation that comes with that system. But when you know that beyond salary, I am a blessing. Doors that has been trying, the company has tried and tried to get those doors open. Suddenly, when God wants to bless that company, he gives them the privilege of employing you. When you enter that office, you don't have to tell them you have come. The manager returns back and says, how many staff do we have? 
oh 26 now 27 who was the last person employed and they said one one gentleman like that okay I've noticed in the last one week something has happened here something supernatural has happened have you noticed the kind of favor have you noticed that stealing has reduced in this company just because the man was there all the three thieves that used to steal they were caught red-handed people who have been stealing for five years nobody catching them with all the charms that they had an ark just came please hear what i'm telling you i'm teaching you truth from scripture you are not just an employee no you are not just a business partner what you are bringing is more than capital what you are bringing is the presence divinity the supernatural they bring you into a ministry as a pastor you are not just one of the 30 pastors no with all due respect every other person can believe what they believe but you know there is an implication i'm sharing with you my mindset i'm sharing with you my beliefs the mystery of godliness the mystery of godliness your life becomes an effulgence of signs and of wonders your life becomes a, a marvel first to you not because you are anything special in yourself ladies and gentlemen what i'm teaching you these are not just these are not cunningly devised fables these are truths that are provable god can live in a man you can have something you were not born with you can have something that was not given to you in a university you can have something that was not given to you in your nation the reality of the life of god at work in a human spirit listen please hear me listen to me our fathers of faith men like tl osborne men like rw shambach these men and women carried this revelation they came to africa they shifted climate with power and with grace ordinary men mighty god ordinary men powerful god ordinary men all wise god ordinary men el shaddai I can tell you why people continue to dishonor the Lord because our cities and respectfully speaking our churches are losing the supernatural element there's all kinds of cunningly divine fable device fables manipulations of darkness the sick remain sick the oppressed remain oppressed all kinds of stories hear me now please listen in addition to the reality of eternal life as you walk with God you get to a point where the Holy Spirit begins to be introduced to you not just as one who brought the life of God but as God himself he begins to lead you through a process he does not just reveal power you shall receive power after 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 god does not empower you when he's building you he empowers you when he's sending you so when you come to jesus stop looking for power come to me it is the making that happens empowerment is at the point where you are being sent not when you are made listen to me because something is about to open up in your life believe me when i tell you this many of here you here looking at me are men and women of god most of what we do in church is just some jamboree of being disciplined young men and women most of what we do in church is not it's not the supernatural it's just a manifestation of flesh from ill cultured men and women of god 
play of the flesh for the purpose of self-glorification. That your life becomes a perpetual threat to darkness. Not because of what you are saying, but because of what you are carrying. What you are carrying first before what you are saying. You will be amazed to know what is happening to people now from the realm of the spirit. All kinds of impartations. All kinds of liftings. This is not about Joshua Selman. This is every believer's heritage in Christ. But hear me, brothers and sisters. There is one thing I know. And this is why you came to church today. Listen to me. Somewhere in your Christian experience... When God is ready to begin to build you and announce you to the nations, he exposes you to different dimensions and different levels of graces. Now listen to my story. There was a time I have shared with you a few of my visions here. Just pay attention. I'm in this vision and I'm seeing an endless sea of people. From the north to the south, the east and the west. And then these people begin to cry to me and say, Apostle, there is no food and there is no water. And then I said, who is the cause? And they were all pointing to me. It was a whole generation. I said, me? Why would I be that wicked? And they said, you are the one. And then I made up my mind that I was going to go. But I had remembered in that vision that there were some people who were trying to bully me. They were trying to pursue me. That's what even took me to that room to be hiding. It was upstairs. I made up my mind that if I perish, I perish. But I have to save these people. As soon as I opened the door, here stands this giant ancient man with beards. Now I know he was the Holy Spirit. But he stood there and he said, give me your hands. He said, we will walk together. My hands were so tiny in his hands. And yet he held me. And we began to move. We began to move. Jumping from one level to the other. I've shared with you my encounters. Because you are about to receive something tonight. I was worshipping the Lord many years ago. And I was caught up in the realm of the spirit. And then the Lord speaks to me and says, Son, from today I give you my presence as a gift. I'm not sure I understood then what he was saying. And then I see this huge being standing. And he said, from today he will walk with you. I said, what is his name? And he said, he is called the angel of the Lord's presence. Walk with you. This is why you see some of these manifestations. Brothers and sisters, everything God gives a man is meant for the body. It's not the, I told you the days of superstar Christianity is over. We are too serious to just be glorifying flesh. No. The kingdom requires seriousness. If you carry this mentality today, brothers and sisters, you go to a place where there are demon spirits, it's impossible for that place to be quiet. You don't have to be preaching. Just remember the ark has come. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God 
Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Look at me. The next time they ask you, what is your contribution in this company? Tell them I bring the ark. What is your contribution in this business? There are five business partners. We don't know why you are here. Because intellectually, we don't think you have any relevance. Tell them, there is something that I bring. The ark. Karis Kodeba Lakatosia. I bring to this company the presence of God. I bring to this home the presence of God. I bring to this ministry the presence of God. I bring to this relationship the presence of God. Hear me? Please look at me. Listen carefully. You know, we live in a world that likes to bully people based on all kinds of privileges. And it's easy to look at someone and say you've never flown abroad. You come from a village. You are so dull. You are so daft. And the believer stands full of the presence of God and looking weak, feeling inferior, feeling beggarly. I was teaching a school of ministry students. Oh, there is what you have as a believer. I agree you may not have had the privilege to go around the world. I agree you may not have the privilege of a superior background. I agree you may not have the privilege of a superior sociological orientation. Oh, but there is one thing you have. 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 The presence of God. The life that brings the supernatural. The life of the supernatural. He put it in you. As you move, God is moving. As you talk, God is talking. As you stretch your hands. Listen, listen. Look at me, we are going to pray. Do you know how arrogant it will sound for an ordinary human being to just suddenly believe that these are my hands, you are seeing them. What is special about these hands? What suddenly makes you believe that these hands can heal? Without this revelation, it is pride. Hands that you've been touching every day. A life that you've been touching every day. Can I tell you this? Let no one see you as a disadvantage again. You are not a minus to any system if you understand what I'm teaching you. I have seen many, many sick people healed in my life. I have seen many people delivered. When men give the credit to me, I feel so embarrassed because they are not exactly right. men who have understood this they have changed their society and changed territories carrying this gift of god to the nations next time you are going for a crusade you are not just carrying a salmon as that plane is flying you they are getting god to that region as soon as your feet steps on that ground expect things to happen men should be the last of the people you impact begin to impact the spiritual sphere you have arrived there by the power of the Holy Spirit. Supernatural changes begin to happen and you shift climates. Spare me a few more minutes. Please sit down. Let me teach you one or two things and then we'll pray. My spirit is fired up tonight. Now listen carefully. There are three revelations and three keys that sponsor the release of the supernatural. In as much as it is true that you have been called into supernatural living and the church is a supernatural church, there is an explanation as to our powerlessness. There is an explanation as to the fact that we are unable to produce the kind of result that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Most times, believers just believe that results end in the realm of finances 
or some kind of intellectual achievement so chances are that when you are financially blessed or you are intellectually sound you believe that you have all of the supernatural finding expression that is not true that is not true the first thing i want to teach you is how the supernatural is manifested you see in this kingdom the supernatural is a synergy between the word of god and the spirit of god the union of the word and the spirit i would learn this in a reinhard bonke crusade in 2004 i went to just from kaduna to attend the reinhard bonke crusade when he came i was in that field i remember and i saw this man who came all the way from overseas and the ground was packed with probably tens of thousands of people hungry people desperate to receive from this veteran of the gospel who had traveled from nation to nation and i was there scattered in the crowd i remember standing there with hunger i was already in ministry i had already seen the power of god to a measure but i knew that there had to be more and he preached in his manner a very simple message and this is where some of us that god has committed a bit of the grace for revelation usually we do not have the patience to hear people sound very simple because it almost looks insulting very simple childlike kindergarten kind of expression but when he was done listen carefully he was about to minister the baptism and then to pray for the sick and he was just trying to take water i was part of the tens of thousands of crowds suddenly my eyes opened right there in that crusade ground i thought other people were seeing it suddenly i see this bird as big as this auditorium if not bigger than it just moving round hovering round the entire space where the crusade was happening it had all kinds of silvery bands tied to its wings just like that it was not flapping them it was just moving i was looking what is this brilliance beauty as though the sun was in the bed and then the holy spirit took me to genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2 and the spirit hovered round the face of the waters why because the word of god was about to come and the holy ghost taught me in that encounter that it is the union of the spoken word and the movement of the spirit that produces the miraculous it was not in a bible study session i was there having an encounter on a crusade ground that's why you see when people come to church and are distracted is a spirit because you don't know the moment when your word will come i can be preaching now and in the midst of my sermon god can open your eyes and be showing you something else when i saw that do you know this when i was back from that vision i had backed the stage i didn't even know when i turned i knew i had caught something i knew that i was about to step into the realm of signs of wonders and i saw people healed i saw all kinds of dramatic miracles and i said my god so i can tell you this listen to me if you want to manifest the supernatural that you have received it is a union of the strength of the word of god in you and the ministry of the spirit this is what separates miracles from superstition the word and the spirit now there there is a big problem with the body of christ as far as the dynamics of the manifestation especially the charismatics and the pentecostals it's like there is a group that chose the spirit we are the spirit people we pray in tongues we pray we prophesy we do all of this doesn't matter whether we have respect for scripture or not i'm not being sarcastic you know i'm sent to the body 
and then there are those who are the word people forget about all those spirit things just teach the word both of them are incomplete it is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come it is the spirit of god who hovered around the face of the waters but do you know when the spirit of god hovered around the face of the water creation did not happen until the word came and elohim said light be. but if elohim had spoken and the spirit of god did not hover there still will not be a miracle what does that tell you there are two principal tools or two principal platforms that the believers both access and manifest the supernatural number one is the ministry of the word what does that mean the word of god is powerful because all creation happens through the word let me give you a few scriptures lend me a few minutes colossians 1 16 media let's work together colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 please look up it says for by him were all things created how many things were created things that are in heaven things that are in earth visible and invisible look how powerful the word is so the word of god can create visible things like a job visible things like physical healing to a body visible things like opportunities invisible things whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers all things were created by him and for him john chapter 1 and verse 3 a scripture that we've worked on in this house all things were made by him and without him that means outside of his influence and outside of his partnership was not anything made that was made hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person please look up it says and upholding how many things all things by the word of his power he holds all things including the person to help you he holds him by the word of his power including your destiny helper including the form that has your contract written on it it is held by the word of his power Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 Paul teaching us on faith he says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear that means let it be let it not be new to you the material realm came from the immaterial realm just because it is unseen does not mean it is unreal it is only unseen to the optical eye but it is on is real very very real so the union of the word listen according to colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 the bible declares that the word of christ should dwell in us richly in all wisdom so the more the word of god becomes your obsession listen carefully the more you learn scripture the more you submit yourself to the ministry of the word you are empowering yourself to manifest the supernatural let me tell you what happens in the body of christ and this is why there is a high margin of error in our administering the supernatural we ignore the word all we look for is anointing all we look for is vessels all we look for is a bottle of oil or a bottle of some kind of emblem i'm not saying those things are wrong in themselves but all things start with the word the more you submit yourself to the ministry of the word the more you are opening yourself to the supernatural question how did wine come about when the feast remember in in, in the wedding in in in, in john chapter 2 the first miracle of jesus according to the synoptic account of john water turned to wine it always starts as water if you want wine get water first if it is god that will turn that water to wine if it's god that will give you wine it will not start as wine it will start as water it is the word of god that you must have and then as you go that word is now turned to wine 
if it's a job that you need if it's God that will give you that job it will not start with a job it will start with the word it is as you engage in the word the word will now change to a job are you seeing it now if it is breakthrough you want and you go to God and say Lord all I want is breakthrough God says go back to the word it is as the word prevails in your heart the word will now become that breakthrough if you look for things outside of the word you may never find them it is the word that metamorphoses into those things the word of god number two is the ministry of the holy spirit we see the classic dynamics of manifesting the supernatural in ezekiel chapter 37 please give it to us very quickly ezekiel 37 let's start from verse 1 ezekiel 37 and the hand of the lord was upon me the bible says and he carried me out in the spirit of the lord and he set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and he caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry verse 3 he said unto me son of man question now can these bones leave and the prophet answered O lord god thou knowest verse 4 he said prophesy unto these bones and say unto them O ye bones hear whose word you do the speaking but the word is not your own when you speak your word it will not happen God is the word but you are the voice like John said if you want to be the word yourself that one you are you are in trouble already the realm of the spirit will not respect your word it respects God's word even if a donkey speaks God's word, the realm of the spirit will obey it. Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause what? Breath. Are you seeing now that the first miracle that happened was breath to enter them first if there is no breath there cannot be life and you shall leave verse 6 and I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall leave and ye shall know that I am the Lord verse 7 so I prophesied not as I wanted as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and bones came together, bone to his bone. That means, watch this, if I disregard the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I do not grow in my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It is true that I am a recipient of the life of God, that divinity resides within me, but I may never be able to manifest that reality. Listen carefully. Most believers continue to brag and boast that they are recipients of the life of God. And it's a fact based on what the Bible says. But you see, let me tell you the truth. Releasing the reality of that life comes when you understand these dynamics. The word of God the ministry of the word you must engage with the word you must stay with the word what is the benefit of the word number one the word of god shows you how god operates number two the word of god exposes you to the boundaries of god's commitment to you god is only committed to what he said to you not what you want it is your assignment to find out what he said that relates to what you want God is all powerful, but that does not just mean he does anything anyhow. No. He is regulated by his word. The word of God defines the boundary and the coordinates of God's power. God's power does not just operate randomly. His word. So, if what you want is lifting, you cannot have lifting until you can find from scripture where god committed himself to you on that wise is there any assurance based on the word of god that he said he will lift you 
Yes, there is such an assurance. Number one, the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. Number two, Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says, if it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. It says that the Lord will set you on high above all nations of the earth. There is a condition. Is there any scripture that supports your advocating your rising? Yes. Yes. Arise. Shine. For your light is come. So you can carry these scriptures now. You have satisfied the word component. Now you have to engage the spirit. Just because you have found the word does not mean the supernatural will manifest. You Now God is bound by his word because he has chosen to exalt his word even above his reputation i have found a word that guarantees that god can lift me that god will lift me based on his desire for me you must engage the ministry of the holy spirit it is the spirit that gives life to that letter hallelujah are we together now one of the ways we engage the ministry of the holy spirit for our profiting is through the priesthood ministry of prayer write it down the priesthood ministry of prayer you will never truly manifest the supernatural if you ignore the priesthood ministry of prayer do you know why he gave us the prayer language do you realize that the prayer language is connected to the holy spirit ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come in acts chapter 2 we do not see them receiving power we see them receiving tongues but what he said he never said you shall receive tongues he said you shall receive power but in acts chapter 2 we see them receiving tongues that means there is a relationship between that language of the spirit and the release of spiritual power if i tell you for instance that i am going to give you a thousand dollars a thousand dollars anything that comes from me to you is a thousand dollars suddenly you see someone holding a gift pack coming to you what should you suspect is in it because my commitment to you was not a gift pack my commitment to you was a thousand dollars so if I'm bringing you a gift pack a wise person will open it to say the thousand dollars you said must be there so if he said i will give you power and yet what you got in the very next chapter is a language there must be a relationship between that language and the power he said are we together yes most people do not pray and yet they want to command superior levels of the supernatural we have agreed here that god is not a magician can i tell you sincerely a generation that does not pray will truly be a powerless generation jesus himself recognized the presence of principalities and powers the bible says he is head of them you must get to a point in your life where you know how to engage the ministry of the holy spirit engaging the ministry of the holy spirit is not just saying holy spirit come no no you engage him as you build intimacy in prayer and you take advantage of that prayer language to release superior spiritual power power that can change circumstances the lord is my shepherd you are a man of god and you are trusting god to have a supernatural ministry there is no superstition about it it is the union of the word and the union of the spirit the holy spirit engaged in prayer then the holy spirit engaged in worship do you know let me tell you sincerely this our generation does not understand how worship changes people we sing a lot of songs but very few people understand the role of worship in spiritual empowerment we have mastered prayer but not worship I can pray for five hours eight hours ten hours 
but chances are if you worship for 15 minutes anything after that you consider it a distraction say look this worship is okay i've had the song i know it let me pray oh dear worship is a powerful atmosphere listen when you when you worship the lord is the protocol of the presence you now begin to create the atmosphere for the presence of god to be made manifest this is true he will not suffer my food to be moved i carry your presence everywhere who am i your mind is so full of me mortal man awesome god mortal man awesome god there is nothing special to us and in us by ourselves but when we learn how to engage that atmosphere the miraculous is atmosphere dependent you must learn how to not only carry the ark but carry the climate scientists today are laboring so much to master the art of simulating climate regardless seasons so they can make rainy season happen in dry season they don't there are i studied years ago a group of superstitious people in a part of africa called rainmakers these are people who know how to fraternize with spirits and change climate and you will watch videos where they would come and dance and do all kinds of things that don't make sense suddenly you begin to hear thunder and clouds forming and then rain comes they call them rain makers when you learn worship you become a real spiritual rainmaker. you can make any dry season can i challenge you go to an atmosphere where it looks like god cannot move go to an atmosphere where it looks like people there are times you get to a place where you see that there's no faith in the people they look at you and even you you wonder what brought you there i teach you learn to be a spiritual rainmaker. carry your climate with you don't just carry your bible alone carry your climate with you and when you lift your voice to the god of heaven and immerse yourself in worship i do not know anybody who truly works appreciably in the level of the supernatural that does not value worship genuine worship genuine worship genuine worship and you are setting your atmosphere can i tell you the best way is to combine all three worship prayer what fire oh dear Sela katoska bragada you are praying and worship is playing and sometimes scripture is playing too don't say will i understand leave your mind this is spirit interaction how many of you have listened to messages and fell asleep and in the realm of the spirit you continued listening to it including the encounters and the impartation in that message you get up and you know that heaven is in this room i'm not alone i'm not alone i'm not alone powerful impartations saturate your atmosphere with worship and something is happening to you as a man of god you stand to minister the word of god and you are ministering with power as a business person saturate yourself with that atmosphere of heaven and go to the boardroom and you sit down and you are speaking they are looking at you but it's not you they are seeing their spirits are seeing someone else their minds cannot articulate it what is it about this man that we are seeing these are the mysteries of the kingdom now please hear me there is such an empowerment and a grace in addition to all that i've shared there is truly an engracing that god can give an individual for the supernatural for signs and wonders how does this grace work when this grace comes upon you number one 
this grace causes you to desire the word more than ever before this grace causes you to desire the presence of god more than ever before this grace causes you to desire fellowship with god it's not just a grace that makes you to go and start laying hands on the sick the grace operates by working on your desire the first way you know you have carried that grace is there is an unusual desire for the word of god there is no such thing as no time an unusual desire for prayer an unusual desire for fellowship you can lock yourself for a whole day as though you're a madman there is a grace that is working in you i have spent my life seeing this grace walk this is why we rejoice every time we have the privilege of traveling from nation to nation and from region to region every time i prepare to come here i am happy because i know that i am not coming alone you are not just coming to listen to another sermon no this is the place of encounter this is the place of surrender this is the place where my life is changed listen whenever we're preparing for service we don't have to find out what your problem is we just have to find out if he's coming with us I cannot begin to find out who is there how sick how oppressed that is a labor God did not give you all you need to do is to know that you are carrying his majesty and then in addition the graces that he has placed upon your life and you can say let's go and you can step into an auditorium like this having people following from across the globe following from all over the city and you can dare tell people that Jesus is real you can dare tell people that he can turn their lives around and the Holy Spirit moves through your words and begins to produce supernatural results some of you come and you sit down and from prayer testimonies something is happening to you you cannot even begin to explain i've been going to church but what is happening to me i will tell you is the supernatural it is not only the three-dimensional realm that works here i assure you this is mount zion this is koinonia an innumerable company of angels the spirits of just men made perfect jesus himself the firstborn of the begotten he is here in the midst of his people in addition to all of these things when god granted me the grace for signs and wonders my life changed if you do not have the grace for signs and wonders especially if you're a minister of the gospel the supernatural you will live your life in jealousy and envy and anger you will not have results it's true and you see the thing about the supernatural is that if it is there it is there if it is not there it's not there it's as simple and honest as that many of you have come from homes representing businesses representing different career representing different situations i cannot promise you that i can come to your house i will not even attempt it i will not promise you that i can see you one on one but i have a promise there is something you can be given something greater than me something better than me 
it is the grace of God the grace that can empower you to walk in the supernatural it is a grace God has so lavishly placed upon this life and placed upon this ministry you know you are operating in the supernatural because your results happen in astronomical proportions proportions that does not look fair then you know God is in that equation one plus one minus God is two Satan can even make it zero without God if you want ten it must be five plus five nine plus one eight plus two but when you bring the supernatural into that equation even one plus zero can be ten because there is a factor that can change the calculation it is based on that that frail men like us can have the audacity to tell the nations we present you Jesus and usually they will laugh except that we are not alone hear me I bring you a cure to fear a cure to mediocrity a cure to feeling I am a second-class citizen there is a grace that can land upon your life and literally turn you to a sign and a wonder and the way God imparts these graces is that in addition to that which salvation has done all graces come from God through men to men it's time for you to begin to produce real results so that people don't begin to doubt you listen you are a man of God you're going to get into a life of trouble if you keep saying many things that don't happen the world that we live in today is an audacious world it's not as silent and sympathetic as it used to be but there is a grace that can empower you that as you say it you see it because when God said it he saw it are we blessed we're going to spend a few minutes praying and then I'm going to pray for you from the depth of my heart the Lord gave us an instruction I really want you to carry this grace listen ladies and gentlemen you will marvel and wonder at what your results become like truly speaking this is no flattery if it is the Lord's doing it must be marvelous in your eyes there are some of you September will look like 10 years put together one month one month one month looking like 10 years together and the next time they ask you how has this thing happened in your life be very quick to tell them that it is because of the Jesus factor the presence factor the supernatural factor you just started a ministry how come in four months God is doing this through you and you can tell them honestly by my strength I can do nothing but I have accessed a grace from heaven how come your children your children who did not used to do well what suddenly happened to them how come the academics are changing I know these children they were also classmates with my children and you tell them they came for service and something came upon their lives one story and we'll pray a very true story many years ago I always enjoyed the privilege of what we know to be first position or best in class and all of those things and then one time in secondary school I was to receive a root shock and a gentleman who was a dear friend you know that year I don't know what happened and I went back to third and the gentleman took first and it didn't add up to me because we were we were friends and we're wonderful people you can imagine you know just children thinking and then I returned home I was feeling sad and I was saying what 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 would have been the reason and then the gentleman told me something then my goodness there was only one living faith branch then in Joss 
and he told me he said he remembered that not too long before the exams all he remembers is that they did an anointing service and they gathered all of them together and then oil just came on them and declarations were made i said really when i learned this i said oh joshua selman my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed that was the extra factor in the life of that gentleman he came to church in addition to his study a man of god declared over his life and placed something upon his life that beat us hands down we did our best it just did not work the same way something is coming on you this night that when it comes upon your life even though you just came here with your intellect alone you came here with your connection but i stand before the god of heaven this grace that comes upon ordinary men and turns their lives around hear me for some of you when this grace comes upon you people who have long forgotten you believe what i tell you supernatural achievements by the spirit things will just begin to happen some of you by this grace you will step into ease ease that you may not be able to explain ease that you cannot explain you believe that when it's time to pray please no moving around don't distract yourself this is a very prophetic moment in the next five minutes i like you to pray the prayer point is lord give me an encounter let this grace come upon my life lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray please pray please pray supernatural it's time to command the supernatural supernatural prosperity supernatural wisdom supernatural ministry supernatural evangelism supernatural business supernatural parenting Pray. Shketa paka taka to paka tos. Kele paratos kata branda kata kata branda tos. Following online, make sure you're praying. Lord, I am ready to step into a supernatural life. The reality manifesting, commanding the supernatural. Man of God, pray. Believers, pray. Let ordinary living come to an end. Ordinary ministry come to an end. Ordinary business come to an end. Ordinary parenting come to an end. I step into the realm of miracles, signs, wonders. Oh. 
results that confound principalities and powers. Supernatural music ministry. Are you praying? Don't be distracted. Pray. Supernatural results by the spirit of the living God. It's time to shift to shift levels in the spirit. It's time to begin to manifest the supernatural. It's time for your life to be an epistle, a testament of God's wonder working power. Are you praying? Are you praying? <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire fall, fall on me. Fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. Just in the days of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. Like in the days, like in the days of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. Fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. Jesus please listen to me 
I'm about to pray for you. But let me tell you this. In this end time, those who will really carry the grace for signs and wonders must be people who are serious with Jesus. Very serious. Very hungry. Very passionate. More than titles. More than church. More than emoji. More than apostle. More than prophet. I want to pray for you now. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set my heart on you so you'll do what you do we're in a mood this is a moon we are here this is a moon When Peter and John came to the man at Get Beautiful, he said, silver and gold I do not have. He said, but such as I have, give I unto you. Listen to me. I don't mean to be arrogant, but let me tell you this. When it has to do with the supernatural, I know what I am saying. I have enjoyed the message of God even on this wise I know what a supernatural life will do to you your ministry your business your life it is Jesus we are looking up to but it is men that he uses I'd like you to open your heart in the next two or three minutes believe with your heart just help those under the anointing I have had many encounters in my life. I've only said a few of them. It is on the authority of scripture, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and the privilege of these encounters. I myself have been a recipient of the graces of those that have gone ahead. It is not everything that has come just directly by my own personal encounter. We have met many people. There are those who have gone ahead, even in ministry. There are those who have demonstrated a supernatural life. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. We are not the first. You are not the first to do supernatural business. John D. Rockefeller. These are men and women who encountered grace. You're not the first to do supernatural ministry. Oh dear. Scripture and history is full of men and women who shook the earth in their lifetime. You're not the first to have a supernatural career. Ask Daniel through the reign of four kings. He remained on top. Regardless who was in power, he remained on top. There was a grace. And they said an excellent spirit, not an excellent talent, an excellent spirit was at work in him. You are not the first to be intellectually supported by the spirit of God. There were Hebrew boys who were ten times better. Ten times better. Let me pray for you now. Father, let this grace come upon your people. Let everyone under the sound of my voice, by the privilege of this grace, by the, the ministry of this angel of the Lord's presence, 
I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus that everyone under the sound of my voice at the count of three may this grace come upon you may it follow you may it produce results one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace in business supernatural business supernatural ministry signs signs and wonders in the name of jesus let those that have hitherto rakatos kete prekete kata i command those gates be open hither and tita in the name of jesus christ be open hither and tita in the name of jesus christ hear me in the morning in the afternoon in the evening in the night manifest the supernatural for many of you who are in ministry here i anoint you go back to your pulpit let fire begin to fall upon your altars in unusual proportions in the name of jesus christ everything that has been happening in your life by a natural sequence we place grace upon it and we command in the name of jesus quantum leaps geometric proportions of results where you have been praying naturally i place grace upon you may your ministry of prayer step into a supernatural dimension may your ministry of word study step into a supernatural dimension there are many of you here god has called you into the healing ministry but as it is you have not really seen that dimension the tangibility of the healing oil it has not come upon you i open this jar in the realm of the spirit and in the name of jesus like samuel unto david i place that oil upon you receive that grace now young and old man of god woman of god prophet apostle pastor intercessor receive that grace i release you into a strange healing ministry in the name of jesus We have a financial series coming but let me pray over your finances can i be sincere with you there is such a thing called supernatural finances there really is such a thing the mystery of the raven that brings bread for elijah at brook cherry the mystery of the five loaves and two fish that can feed five thousand there is supernatural finances in the name of jesus i stretch my hands from today in the name of jesus i measure a thousand cubits by grace i push you into a deeper level of supernatural finances provide value at a supernatural dimension in the name of jesus christ one last prayer for many of you you have been making progress but the progress is too slow relative to your destiny in the name of jesus just help those under the anointing my goodness hear me wherever you should have been but because you did not have the supernatural advantage you have not arrived here yet i stand by the rod of the prophetic in the name of jesus between now and the end of september please hear me i stand
hand that's touching the God of my covenant go forward go forward I push you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ help them please go forward in the name of Jesus Christ go forward go forward go forward in your career go forward in business go forward in ministry go forward can I be sincere with you this is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress I pray for you again whatever has made the pace of your acceleration slow the same grace that came upon Elijah and made him to run and overtake the chariots of Ahab may that grace come upon you right now and every force that will want to fight this prophecy in the name of Jesus by the privilege of God's grace he has given us the key of David the key that opens a door that no man can shut and can shut a door that no man can open we open that door and it remains open day and night we open that door it remains open day and night by the mystery of the key of David that door will never be shut day or night in the name of Jesus Thank you Jesus wave your hands to Jesus as an act of worship let's wave your hands to the King of Kings thank you thank you Jesus for changing my level thank you for giving me a new story remember Thanksgiving is the last digit to the faith equation Lord we thank you we wave our hands in worship thanking you indeed it is a good thing to come to the house of the lord hallelujah now please listen just final admonishment do not walk out of this place after sharing the grace as if it's not church you came to because many people even under this atmosphere once you are done you return back to your vomit again and now begin to act in a natural carnal way realize that you are always supernatural protect the things that come out of your lips don't just speak as if you are not born again don't just act as if the holy spirit is not at work in you it says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them hallelujah let me make an altar call now inside outside all the overflows there are people here whilst you heard me talking about the supernatural i told you that the first basis of the supernatural is salvation your encounter with jesus and i know that you are here and you've never truly made that decision for jesus perhaps you've been coming to church perhaps you even come from a christian family perhaps you've been around men of god but you're saying apostle I want to start afresh with Jesus or you are here saying I've given my life to Jesus Christ but as it is right now I truly do not know the way my life is going I need a renewal I need a rededication I'm going to count one to five I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand here one run to Jesus Help them, help them, help that lady, please. Help her, help her so she doesn't fall. Here. Run to Jesus, inside and outside. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours. 
It's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours. It's yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Let that be your confession. Join them if you are still coming. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. One more time. It's a prayer from the depth of your heart. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Can I tell you this? Only God can tell the joy that is in my heart every time I see people come to stand and make this declaration for Jesus. Every time. We pray for this every week. We cry for this. At the back of our preaching, we expect this to happen. Souls running to Jesus genuinely. Genuinely. I want to salute every single one of you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. He can always give you a new beginning. I can tell you. This is a family of faith. There are many of you, whilst you are crying, God is seeing a prophet, an apostle. He's seeing a mighty general. Lift your right hand. Very high above your head. And I want you to say this convincingly, knowing that Jesus is here. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are my God, my Savior, my Lord, and my King. Tonight I declare that my life is no longer mine. I hand it over to you in exchange for your own life i receive into my spirit eternal life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life say after me the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father i pray and thank you for these ones jesus for these ones that you have brought to yourself we honor you and we thank you by the authority of scripture i decree and declare that your sins are forgiven and that the Lord gives you a new beginning from tonight. I commend you therefore to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. And I pray that you will become mighty vessels in the hands of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that everything that is not of God in and around your life. Let it go now once and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you to the family of faith and I declare that in the name of Jesus Christ you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray congratulations to every one of you now very quickly there are counselors waving the placard at my right which is your left I like you to please move in concert be be careful with the crane so you don't injure yourself please all of you this way to my left let's celebrate them as they go you'll just meet with a few counselors and you'll be back Now, if any of them stood up close to you and they did not carry their bags, their Bible, I forgot to say this. Please make sure you protect it for them whilst they are away. Hallelujah. Celebrate them as they go. Amen. Now, just, just two quick announcements. Please let me have your attention. Thank you for your patience. Just two very quick announcements and then we're done for tonight. The first is... Our school of ministry now as you know we've been running a school of ministry for eight years now 
and we're really proud of what God is making out of our students. And um, it's usually part of the program to have what we call a practicum. A practicum is a time where I haven't built the students to a measure. We allow them, um, we engage them in the work here in Koinonia. They can run a whole service or do something just to build them. And um, by the grace of God, we're happy. I'm not sure that I have the date here. Maybe I'm sure I threw the paper somewhere. But then, the practicum for this set will be on the 10th of October. The 10th of October, right here, it will be a koinonia service. So please pray along, support them. Some of you, they are your loved ones. Please cooperate with them. They are going to be having engaging moments from now till that time. Please do understand and lend them your support. And then by the grace of God, same October, by his grace, we are going to be graduating them, both campuses, both here. And Zaria will be graduating our students in October. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, there's a special announcement coming from the worship team. The worship team is pleased to announce that it's finally opened and is looking for skilled instrumentalists and vocalists. Those interested, listen carefully, those interested should please send, I'm told, maybe a one minute video to ENI worship team as one word, ENI worship team at gmail.com. Or you can do well to wait. I think if you have the time, you can wait just at my left and then you'll see some of the leaders. They'll guide you on what to do. They are particularly look, looking for skilled instrumentalists and vocalists. You are here, you are in this house and God has graced you on that wise. Please do well to see them and trust the Lord to bless you and to help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? We thank God for the showers of blessings. We receive them as confirmations that you have stepped into a supernatural dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, the next announcement is security. Now, God has granted us grace. We're a very large house. There are overflows down to the basement and outside. And I want to lend my voice with the security department to encourage everyone that please, every time you come for Koinonia, number one, realize that you are ultimately responsible for any and all items that you come with. We've had an occasion where items get missing and all of that. Please do well to make sure that um, if and when you pack your vehicles, work with what the security department tells you and then do well to lock your vehicles. And then when in the auditorium or around the facility, please make sure that your bags if you came with valuables, make sure that you always keep an eye on them, especially because of some of the manifestations that happen. We do not want a situation where we have people coming in to come and steal. It's unfortunate. It shouldn't be. But we're a responsible ministry and we will not rule that out. It is possible that these kinds of things can arise, as is the case with most um, very large ministries. So I want to encourage you to please... Be security conscious even whilst you are here. We have our CCTVs and then we have the um, protocol and security department working together to make sure that lives and property, we also have the force and the rest, but at least do your best to contribute. Lend your attention and your participation to make sure that everything um, that should be protected is protected. And then as much as possible, if you can, uh, as much as with, is within your power, do well to minimize coming with extremely valuable things to church. Maybe things like um, checkbooks or some kind of very valuable things, except you have to. And if, if you do come with them, please protect them. We do not want a situation where we hear that people have come to um, you know, steal or do anything. And then the final announcement still on security is please... We have official correspondence systems. The PR desk is outside. You can always meet them for correspondence. Do not listen to any third-party correspondence on any and all matters that relate to the ministry, especially when you are here, especially as it um, concerns things that have to do with finance 
or so on and so forth whatever you want to find out the pr desk is there the protocol department alongside the security people they are here to help you you can always ask authorized people because some of you have been misled by people who just want to take advantage of you it's important that i state this and the lord is going to grant us grace and help us in jesus name it's raining so please do well if you if you if you don't have to you can just remain a bit let the rain subside and then you can go out so that you do not um you do not get yourself wet especially for those who have children and nursing mothers and if you can please do well to help and support some of our people who may not have vehicles as, as at yet so that you can just help them the lord will bless and honor you in jesus name have you been blessed tonight please rise up on your feet thank you so much I honor and I bless everyone who has been here. Again, please, let's appreciate Minister Owe Abutu. God bless you. Thank you. Such, such a great time with you. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. I declare that your week beginning is blessed in Jesus' name. You will experience the supernatural and you will command same all through this week in the name of Jesus. You will continue to love the Lord with all your heart and you continue to serve him passionately. And whilst you do that, you will keep experiencing results from one level to the other in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen god bless you and see you on sunday Everywhere I carry your prayer